Hello and welcome! In this tutorial we are going to play some traffic signs and traffic lights into our scene. We will also explore the signs modifiers, we will do some vector list operations and we will take a look to the geometry library. Let's start! We will use the scene that we created for the marking tutorials. Here we will add traffic lights and traffic signs. We will start placing a traffic light here using the, ve the vector points, but first unselect everything. Click on points and choose the right vector list. We don't want trees, we want traffic signs. And click to create it. Now we see uh, the modifiers that conform the traffic signs vector list. Some of them are related with logical databases, uh, like the signal modifier or the point link modifier. Um, but the height type, for example, is one that we need. Uh, you can choose here with what kind of height. Relief is okay, but without that offset. So let's set the offset to zero because we don't want flying signs. And yeah. So for the logical part also we have um, an open drive object. But that's something uh, out of the scope of this tutorial. Let's move to the point object placer modifier. That modifier actually links the actual vectors to the geometry. And uh, we see that the geometry, uh, the group is, co is the number 113 but it has a lot of instances inside. If you just select the group, it will randomly assign one of those geometries to your vector. That's something we don't want now. So let's look for the traffic light that I, I'm actually looking for a traffic light here. Okay, that one. And uh, once you have it selected, it will assign just that geometry to that vector. And uh, so here we go. If we press F6, we can see the traffic light there and we can rotate it so that it's place it. Okay, okay. That's also, you need to set the pivot point at the center of the object. Um, otherwise it will uh, just uh, rotate from where you have your cursor. And Yes, so now it's facing the cars. Let's see how it looks like uh, by pressing F9. And here is our traffic light. Now we will add a pedestrian traffic light to our scene. Let's do that. Since the new traffic light will have the same position as the one we already have, we will dupli duplicate that vector. We see in that vector group we have just one vector and when we duplicate it we have now two. But we would like to have it in a separate group so it's easier to see. And for that, I mean, the new group will have all the modifiers we had also for the traffic signs we already have. To do that, yes, make a new group and we are going to clone it. Give it a new name, pedestrian traffic light makes sense. and. Now we just need to link to the point object placer or pedestrian traffic light geometry. Just in that group there is no pedestrian traffic light geometry. I will show you where it is on the installer folder from 3 and 3D Builder and how to include it into your library. Uh, first of all, um, so we will include it in the uh, 113 in that group jump in, into the library using that shortcut. You can also access the library from here, from the top, but that shortcut is really useful because it goes directly to the group we need, the 113. And here are all the instances that uh, conform that group. The location of the geometry that has not been included into the standard project is that one. There you will find other interesting stuff like the projects used for the tutorials. Now let's navigate into the geometry folder and find out the where all traffic lights are and they are here so I'm copying the path 
and I will add a new instance uh, here. I will give the path we just copied and look for the pedestrian traffic light that I want to use. I want to use that one. Okay. The new geometry will take the first free slot in the ID list. In that case, it's ID number one. And we can preview it here. That's our pedestrian traffic light. Now we just need to go to our point, to our vector, and in the point object placer, in element mode, we will link it to the new geometry. It is still in the group 113, but the ID was the ID number 1. So we scroll up and here we go. Local override. And okay, we will, let's go to, yeah. Right, let's, let's rotate it so it's uh, placing it uh, correctly, like facing the... For the height type, we could leave it in relief and give an offset to that, that actually makes a lot of sense. Or we can use the vector height and uh, introduce the height in meters here. I'm going to give a 3.2 .2 meters. Let's see how it looks like. And here we have our traffic light, or pedestrian traffic light, and it's looking quite okay. We will add also now a traffic sign, just in case the traffic light is broken, so that there are no accidents with the cars. Let's do that. To add our traffic sign, we will follow the same procedure as before. We will duplicate our vector and make a new group called Signs. Then in the point object placer, just uh, link your vector to a stop sign. And we make local override, okay, why not? Just in case, we, yeah, of course, maybe in that group there are later on more signs, makes sense. We see again vector height and we give it's not shouldn't be as tall as the pedestrian traffic light so I'm gonna give 2.5 meters and let's see how it looks like in 3D. Switch to 3D view and here is our stop sign. So we need to tweak it a little bit in WYSIWYG mode, select it, like use the show vector data and select it in element mode and if we rotate like that nothing will happen you need to press F6 like to go in WYSIWYG mode like now and now we can rotate it in the desired position we bring it a bit down in C so like something like that and uh, maybe we can scale it I f have the feeling that's a bit too small that one I mean traffic signs have like different sizes yeah, let's put it like like that right now okay it's not refresh we are in WYSIWYG mode and until we generate it again we will have the old and the new position of the stop sign let's translate it uh, so that it's not in the middle of that pole and let's generate it to see how it looks like And here we go, that's our traffic sign there, our stop traffic sign. Now, um, Trian 3D Builder has way more traffic signs than the one in that group. Just, uh, I mean, we, in the latest release, we added like the complete uh, um, traffic, almost a complete uh, traffic signs uh, of the manual on uniform traffic control devices for USA and also the ones for uh, Germany, like the Strassenverkehrs Ordnung, and uh, you can find them here. They are usually not in the standard, they are not in the standard project because uh, usually when you import a database it will link just the geometry, just the traffic signs that you need for that database. But you can have access to them and they are the newest traffic signs we have. So if you need one, just uh, navigate uh, to the 
atlas to the textual atlas and you will find the name and the number um, down of each of the signs and since the geometry is sharing the same number it's uh, way easier to localize it on the folder so I'm, it was 306 and that's the one we have to import here we scroll down till we find the 306 we also note the ID number, in that case number 2, that's the first free number in the vector list and we take a look how does geometry look like, as we see it has way more resolution than the old one so I really recommend to use those for your scene so, so now let's link it to the point object placer the ID number of that geometry inside the group was number 2, so that way it's easier to find. Here it is number 2. And we use local override because we will have more traffic signs and we don't want all of them to be the same. It's a bit big. So let's reset the scale to 1. That's because we scaled up our previous stop sign and now it's looking better. Let's generate it to see how it looks like and we get rid of the old stop sign that way. And that's it. Now, here we go. Now I challenge you to make the same for the other streets. And we are done with our traffic signs tutorial. See you next time.